I'm just like holding on to it as much as I can because I like I live in a Pakeha world. I'm speaking English right now. It's almost like I'm indoctrinating myself so that I just don't lose it. So then I get power from that and, and then knowing that I'm doing that and, and implementing it in front of a crowd or like recording it makes me feel good. Ngoi Pefairangi, she worked with Jarvanias Prime. Um, but it, it was part of, she was part of the catalyst of that movement of incorporating te reo in modern music. And um, there's this one that's dedicated to her um, called Ngoi Ngoi. And um, I don't know, like, I, I really like the sound of like nannies singing. And there's, there's like this video of them and, it, and there's like this American announcer being like, Delvania's Prime! And like, like kind of like Patea Maori Club, like, like this whole thing. Um, and then you hear them all like, like singing together and um, yeah, I, I just like that one. Kawe mate fiki mate Um So don't die like an octopus, die like a hammerhead shark. A hammerhead shark, really difficult to catch, and then once you've gotten it, like you've killed it and you've filleted it, its its um, meat still quivers, as if it's still alive, even though you've chopped it up. So that's what I like about it. Personally, I think that in general, like within the creative sector, art saves lives. When you incorporate te reo into it. Uh, the impact of it is, it means that you can hear te reo in its normal, how it's supposed to sound. So it's an oral culture and um, if you see it written down, you're not really experiencing it till it's to its full capacity. Mm -hmm.